NXL, A-Level Maths, Statistics and Mechanics, Summer 2018, Question 4. Charlie is studying the time it takes members of his company to travel to the office. He stands by the door to the office from 8.40 to 8.50 one morning and asks workers as they arrive how long their journey was. So for part A we need to state the sampling method that Charlie has used. So as he's just standing there for a period of time asking anyone and everyone who comes past then we say that he's used convenience or opportunity sampling. For part B we need to state and briefly describe an alternative method of non-random sampling Charlie could have used to obtain a sample of 40 workers. So one thing he could have done, he could have used quota sampling. So this would mean, for example, every 10 minutes he asks four people. So rather than just taking every single person who comes along in a particular 10 minutes, he's spreading his number of people out throughout the day, taking different 10 minutes, four people in each one. Now Taruni has decided to ask every member of the company the time, x minutes, it takes them to travel to the office. Now as Taruni is asking every single person in the company, so she's asking everybody in the population that this applies to, this is a census. Now Taruni's results are summarised by the box plot and summary statistics below. For part D, we need to write down the interquartile range for these data. So here's our upper quartile, 58, and our lower quartile of 26. The interquartile range is just the upper quartile minus the lower quartile, which is 32 minutes. For part E, we need to calculate the mean and the standard deviation for these data. So this is just a case of using our formulae and the statistics that they've given us. So the mean is the sum of x divided by n. So using what we've been given, that's 4,133 over 95, which gives us 43.505. This could be rounded to one or two decimal places as well. That's fine. And the formula for standard deviation is the square root of the sum of x squareds all over n minus mu squared. So using our sum of x squared, which is 202,294, and n of 95, and the mu which we've just worked out, 43.5, putting them into the formula, we get 15.385. And again, this can be rounded to one or two decimal places. We now need to state giving a reason whether you would recommend using the mean and standard deviation, or the median and interquartile range to describe these data. So the important thing to look at here is that we've got these two outliers on the right hand side. These are two bits of data which are so far outside of the rest of the data that they haven't been included in the box plot. They haven't been included in working out the median, the quartiles and so on. But we've put them on the graph to show that they are there. Now if we were to try to work out the mean or standard deviation of all this data, those two outliers would drag both those numbers up quite a bit. They distort the data because they are outliers. So because of this we're going to use the median and the interquartile range, two things which aren't affected as much by the outliers. So we've got the same box plots and summary statistics but now we've got Rana and David both working for the company have both moved house since Taruni collected her data. Rana's journey to work has changed from 75 minutes to 35 minutes and David's journey to work has changed from 60 minutes to 33 minutes. Taruni drew her box plot again and only had to change two values. We need to explain which two values she's changed and whether they have increased or decreased. So the important thing here is the values, both the original values and the new values for Rana and David's journeys. So, all four of those values, 75, 35, 60 and 33, are larger than the lowest value and the lower quartile. So they have no effect on those two values. They don't change, they're gonna stay the same. Again, the outliers, they're way up there. 
Rana's and David's values aren't the outliers, so they're going to stay the same. But if we look at where 75 and 60 are on the graph, they are bigger than both the upper quartile and the median. And they both change to 35 and 33, two values which are now lower than the median and upper quartile. Okay, so they've moved from above the median and upper quartile to below both of them. Therefore, those two values are going to change and they're going to decrease. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the Doing Maths channel or check out some more of my videos by clicking on the links here.